Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at key mapping. Key mapping gives us a lot of flexibility when controlling live by allowing us to use the computer keyboard to control various functions. Now this has a lot in common with MIDI mapping as well, and a lot of it is very similar to MIDI mapping, but I've split it into two tutorials. Firstly, because key mapping applies to everybody, Anyone can map key functions to the computer keyboard and use them to control live. Whereas MIDI mapping only applies to people who own the external MIDI hardware, like a MIDI keyboard or a control surface. So if you don't own either of those, then you'll only want to watch this tutorial. So it was helpful to split it up in that way. Also, there's just a few other little ways that they are different. So it's better to split them up like this. So. Key mapping mode is enabled by pressing this key button at the top here and also by using the Control K keyboard shortcut and that's Command K if you're on Mac. And you can see a lot of things have lit up in orange here. These are all the things that can be mapped to keys on your keyboard. You notice there's other things that haven't been changed and aren't lit up orange. They can't be mapped to the keys. So you'll notice that as well as buttons being lit up orange, the knobs are also lit up orange. The main benefit to using the keyboard is to really operate buttons, things that require just an on or off state. But knobs can also be mapped to the keys, and the way that will work is they will just go from 0 to 100%. So it'll be just like an on-off sort of situation because obviously keys on the keyboard don't have any other values other than on or off. So to show you an example, the way to map a parameter to a key is just to select the parameter that's lit up orange here, and then just press the key on your keyboard. So if I press a Q, you can see the Q shows up here to indicate that it's mapped. And now if I exit key map mode, then when I press the Q, that knob now jumps from 0 to 100%. Likewise, I could map a button to the Q, and you'll notice I can map the same button to more than one parameter so that I can affect the two things at the same time. And if I exit that, now they'll both change at the same time. Now, you might want it to work the other way around so that when the track is turned on, then the send is turned up. See, at the moment, the send is turned up, but the track is turned off, so that's not much use as you wouldn't hear the send. So you can change how that works by going into key mapping mode and entering the key mapping browser with this button here. And this is where you can see all of your key mappings all laid out like this. It tells you here what key it is and uh, where it is and for the name of what it's mapped to. But you've also got these columns here, minimum and maximum. This will only appear when it's mapped to something that can have the minimum and maximum settings, like a knob. You'll notice that the speaker on here doesn't have the option there. The speaker on button can only ever be on or off, so it doesn't need a minimum and maximum setting. But the knob, we can actually change what the maximum setting it turns up to is. So if I just turn that down a bit, exit key mapping mode, now when I press the button, you'll see it doesn't go all the way up. The maximum setting is now only up there. So if we go back again, I can now actually swap them over. Now this is one way to change the behavior. But the thing is, when controlling buttons with the keys on your keyboard, one thing to think about is your keyboard is intended to only ever press letters to type with. So it always sends the one message. It doesn't keep track of what's on and what's off. So you need to be aware of that. If you go ahead and press one of these buttons with the mouse, then you can change the state. And then when you press the key on the keyboard, it will have the opposite effect. So for example, if the track arm button is off and you turn it on with the mouse, then when you press the key on the keyboard, it will turn it off again. So it will work the opposite way around to how it was originally. So if you're using two together, like in this example where we've got a knob and a track arm button together, then you need to be aware that if you control either of them with the mouse, then you're going to put them out of sync with each other. 
So that's something you've really got to be aware of when you're mapping keys like this. So you can map basically most of the keys on the keyboard. Some of them can't be mapped because they're hardwired to functions in live, like the enter key, for example, or the arrow keys. There's a few keys that have just already got functions and they can't be changed, but most of the keys can be used. And also all the letter keys, you'll notice that the Q here is a lowercase Q. If I now press the shift key, and that's an uppercase Q, so we have the use of both uppercase and lowercase letters. And that's really handy because that basically doubles the amount of keys that we can use out of the letter keys. Likewise, you have punctuation keys that we can use. And as most punctuation keys have two punctuation marks on them, if you use the shift key, you can access the second one. Just by using the shift key, that gives you twice the options as well. Of course, using the shift key is not quite as convenient as just pressing a button on its own, but it's still there might be functions you want to use the shift key and a button for. So key mapping is a very useful feature and it can be used to control a surprising amount in live. It helps you configure live to operate in the way you want it to. You can also trigger clips just by assigning a key to it and you can also select tracks just by mapping the track header there so you could map this track to be selected whenever the Q key is pressed. And also, if you map the track status display here, then the key will jump to whatever clip is playing. So if I exit key map mode, and we're looking here at this rack here, then I press the E, it will jump straight to that clip because that is the clip that's triggered for playing on that track. So that's a very useful feature as well. So that's really it for key mapping. Thanks for watching. See you next time.